Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Makesh's Tech Space, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Um, hope everyone is staying safe. Um, in this video, I'll be doing a user suggested uh, tutorial. Uh, there have been a few of you that have asked about hosting a website using Amazon's S3 bucket service, all the various things to uh, host a website on S3. Um, and I'm assuming those of you that are interested are, are looking to host a static website. So what is a static website? Basically, it's a website that does not need to display or pull any information from, let's say, a database or... Uh, or some source source that has to be pulled in to the website um, using some backend coding or a, a server side uh, application. Um, you know all the content, all the information that you will see on a web page is all stored as part of the HTML page file. So if that is what you guys are looking for, then yes, Amazon's um, AWS S3 uh, service can host static websites and. Uh, and I'll put a link uh, down below in the description on the benefits of using a static static website compared to a dynamic website. So you can, so those of you that are trying to create a website, you can decide if you need a static or go with a or a dynamic website. For dynamic website, I've covered a lot of videos. You could, you know, host uh, create a light cell instance that hosts WordPress or uh, uh, many of the other content management systems that run websites. Um, but for static website, I haven't done anything. So in this video, uh, I'll show you how to host a static website. Now, as I mentioned, you can host a static website uh, on AWS S3, but there are some drawbacks. First, you can't use a custom domain. Um, and two, you have to do some extra configuration to get it working because by default, S3 was never meant to be a hosting service. It was meant to be a storage service and therefore it was never meant to be public. It's supposed to be a storage system just for you. So there are some configurations that you could do um, to convert it into a public service. Now, if you do want to use a custom domain for your static website and you want to use um, HTTPS, the SSO certificate, then you have to configure additional components in the AWS um, arena. Specifically, you'll have to configure uh, AWS Route 53, AWS Certificate Management, and AWS CloudFront. So you'll have to uh, manage, configure, and, uh, and set up all of these various services to really just host a static website. There are several tutorials and, um, and uh, documentation uh, that walks you through how to correctly set and configure this to host that. But, uh, and I'll show you a couple of them right here, um, there's a good article from Amazon's uh, documentation itself on how to do a, a static website using a custom domain. Uh, there's also a uh, pretty good Medium article that shows you how to host a static website with Amazon S3. Um, but I don't recommend that. Um, in fact, I'll show you another diagram of how this setup looks like. Uh, so if you see this diagram, you'll have your domain, you're using the AWS S3, you have to configure a couple of S3 buckets, um, and then uh, you have to have a CloudFront distribution. Um, so you, you have to set up this entire complex. Um, and although, you know, in, in grand scheme of things, it is pretty simple, but it's still you know, various items that you have to go through. So since we on this channel, we focus on simplicity and, and how to get things up and running quickly. Today, I will show you a quick and easy way to set up a static website using AWS. But instead of S3 and other components right here, we'll use another service call, called AWS Amplify. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, set up our static website or uh, make sure we have a static website to upload uh, to our AWS service. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is uh, what I am doing in this tutorial is basically going to html5up.net, uh, which has a lot of um, sample static uh, websites, uh, fully responsive uh, HTML5, CSS3, they're ready to go. So if you are building a brand new site, 
good place to go pick a site pick a template that you like and uh, and you can start building upon it if you already have a site then what you want to do is let's say if you have um, your your website uh, in a directory structure like this, you'll want to take all of those files that make up your static website and zip them up. So send them to a compressed zip folder. So once you do that, you could say my website, something like that. So you have your zip file ready to go for uploading to the AWS service. But if you're starting from scratch or if you just want to uh, go along with this tutorial, basically just go to html5up.net and uh, find one of these templates. I'm going to pick the dimension template. So if you're following along, you'll have html5up-dimension zip file in your downloads folder. So we have that ready. Next, let's go to aws.amazon.com and log into our management console. So. If you don't have an AWS account, uh, you'll need to set one up, create one, and then log into the uh, management console. And that'll bring you to the dashboard of the AWS management console. We'll search for our service that we'll use today, which is Amplify. Then on the Amplify console, we'll click on this menu icon, click All Apps, click on connect app. Um, there are several ways that you could get your static code onto this service um, and they provide you with a GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, code commit, uh, several code repositories. We'll do deploy without a Git provider. Give our application a name. Environment We'll leave as prod and then you have options of providing the zip file um, from an S3 bucket. If it's a URL, public URL, you could provide it there or drag and drop. In this case, we'll do that. Now you can drag from a Windows Explorer uh, into your browser and it will um, uh, take that file. Otherwise, click on choose files. But we'll do that. Show in Finder. Let's drag it right here and there we go hit save and deploy and that should start the provisioning process of setting up the website and you'll see that it's deploying let's see we'll wait for give it a few seconds and it should be completed now at this point you can test that you've done all these steps correctly by clicking on this sample or default domain that it sets up. So if I click on this URL, open in a new tab, and you'll see our website is running on the Amplify service. But the next thing we're going to do is configure a custom domain. So what you'll want to do next is click on Domain Management, Add a Domain, I'll use my sample domain. And uh, okay, okay. Um, I don't think I, well, let's leave it at this, set up redirect, okay. So let's go ahead and do this. The root domain, I don't think it works as effective uh, or it doesn't work without some additional DNS capabilities. Uh, which are which at least my DNS management provider doesn't doesn't uh, have that capability, which is the ability to create a name records. Root domain may not work here, but um, we'll continue with the setup process. Um, so here at this point, it's starting the various um, uh, steps, which is uh, starts with the SSL creation, configuration, um, then the verification, and then it act finally will be activating the domain. But we need to make a few uh, configuration items in our DNS uh, record file for all of this to work. So first one is to verify that we own the domain. So we'll take uh, this portion, head on over to our um, DNS management. For me, this is um, uh, it's the light cell. 
go to sign in. Search for light cell, and that will take me to this uh, home page, home uh, dashboard for my light cell environment. And then on the networking tab, here's my DNS zone, and this could be anything for you. It could be name.com or GoDaddy or any one of uh, uh, wherever you registered your domain. Uh, it could be that DNS management platform. Here we will add the C name paste and then we also need the value and there we go so that's it um, you shouldn't have to do anything else here you'll just give it some time it may take um, anywhere from five minutes to maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour for it to do all of these uh, various tasks. So as you can see, it already verified that we validated the CNAME record exists. So um, just give it some time. And as uh, each of these steps progress, your domain will be active. You don't have to do anything else at this point. Just sit back and uh, watch this process get completed. So I'll pause the video right here and come back once the domain activation process is complete. Okay, so it's been a few minutes and um, uh, the process is still under underway. The SSL verification is still going on. One of the steps I wanted to show you as well that we'll need to do is um, the couple of other DNS uh, modifications. So if you click on Actions, View DNS Records, you will get to this screen where it now shows you the various DNS um, uh, configurations that are still needed. Um, as I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, for the root domain, we need a special DNS capability called a name record setting. The DNS management that I'm using here in LightCell does not have that capability. If you click on add record, you'll see I cannot pick an a name record. However, if your DNS um, uh, management platform does have that capability, then you'll want to, you can set that up. Uh, for our purposes here, I won't do that. The one that I will do is set up a C name for the dub 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 subdomain. So let's copy the value of our C name. Copy, come over here, create a C name, www, and then paste the value. So that's it. And we're still waiting for the SSL verification and then the activation of the domain. So I will come back once that's done again. All right, just wanted to come back and show that we uh, finished the third step, so SSL verification. Still have not finished the domain activation, but now we are progressing. One more step to go before we're all complete. So I'll give it a few more minutes or until it's done, and then I'll come back again. All right, I'm back, and all the steps for the domain provisioning is complete. And as you'll see here, it should, for you also, it should say your domain name, status is available, and ready to use. So let's go ahead and try it. So let's go to the browser window, and uh, voila. So www.mukesh.me along with an SSO certificate is all configured. Behind the scenes, this service is using all of those various uh, uh, services that I pointed out in the beginning of the video that we'd have to set up manually. Uh, CloudFront, uh, DNS, certificates, and a location probably for storage. This is probably using an S3 bucket behind the scenes as well. So. Uh, Amazon has made it very, very easy for us to now use all of those services with maybe how many clicks, maybe a few clicks, few screens and a few configurations um, without having to worry about all of those things uh, individually. Uh, a couple of other things that I want to point out here. Uh, I have not played around with many of these uh, features, but uh, just wanted to make note of the email notifications feature, um, access control. Not sure uh, how we would use it here, but maybe it's used when you're developing mobile apps or web apps. Um, access logs. So these are all the logs that will, or these are all the entries that will show up in uh, your logs when someone reaches your website or hits your website. And then the final item here is 
rewrites and redirects. So you can uh, set up additional rewrites. You can set up redirects like 301 redirects. Very simple management uh, capabilities they, they provided here. And of course, the final two links, which is documentation and support. So if you run into issues or something that's not working correctly, uh, you can reach out to their support. Um, now the cost for this probably is going to be maybe a few dollars a month. I wouldn't expect it anything more than that. Um, if you did set up all those other uh, services individually to host a static website, uh, it wouldn't have been more than three to five dollars a month anyway. So I think this underpinning, uh, just using those same services should be the same cost. But let me know if you uh, see or read about something different. Um, I think that will round it up. Well, nope. Um, before we go, wanted to uh, talk about how you would continue to do updates to the website. So let's say you uploaded the original version of the website, then further um, down the line, you made some updates to your static website. You'll want to make the updates zip them up just like I showed you earlier, just uh, uh, highlight the entire uh, uh, folder structure for your website and then just uh, compress it to a zip file. Um, and then come back to your static website app and then just drag and drop that file again here. So if I were to do that again, um, let's make a quick change, uh, shall we? So let's open up, so here we go notepad and then one of the changes we can just quickly make is my static website to the title so save that then as we mentioned send this to new changes let's call it that and then take this new changes and simply drop it here. And so <clears throat> it may take a couple of minutes, oh, even less than that, succeeded. So if it did update correctly, now this title right now says dimensions by HTML5 up. If I refresh, it should say my static website. So, you know, modifications can be made in that way. So I think that's it. Um, I just wanted to show you based on some suggestions how to set up uh, a static website using AWS um, features and Amplify is the most simplest feature I've found so far. Um, if you found this video useful, like, share it with your friends, share it with others, um, and subscribe to my channel so you can get videos uh, that I release further and hit that bell icon. So um, I think that's it. Uh, until the next video, take care.